Hey there, it's Amy from PrettyPurpleDoor.com and today we're going to make a wood-burned ornament. So I'm going to do this on a, a birch wood slice here. And this is about two and a half inches in diameter. And um, I cut out or printed out on my computer just a little graphic that we can uh, do this with. The other option is just simply to uh, wood burn directly on the wood, or you can even use a pencil and just draw out your design onto the wood. So this is what I usually use. Um, it's called graphite paper, and it comes in packs of 25 or so. And there's a dark side here, this, this side, and then there's a light side. So when you do this, you want the dark side facing the wood. And if you ever forget, what you can do is just kind of put this flat and write, draw an X, and then you can see that the X came out. And uh, if you did it, if you had done it this way and wrote an X, you can see that like there's nothing that's appearing. So if you ever forget, that's kind of how you can tell. And then what I do is I sort of position it, and then I just use a piece of um, tape here just to hold it still so that it's not moving around. And you can cut this to size if, if that's easier for you. Um, same with this, I'll put this directly on the wood or on the, on the graphite paper that's on the wood. And again, I'm gonna tape it down so everything's nice and uh, sturdy here. And just make sure that when you're taping, you're not taping over anything that you have to trace because you're going to need to get the pencil on there so that the graphite will transfer. So I'm literally just going to trace the outlines of the letters and I'll be back and you can see the full effect in a minute. Okay, and I'm back and I've literally outlined every little line here that I wanted to transfer onto the wood. And now I'm just going to take this whole shebang off. And if you have any lines here that didn't sort of work too well, um, I'm a little messy of a tracer, not my uh, strong suit. But um, now we're going to start our wood burning. So I have a wood burner here and let me just pull it over so you can see it. Mine is pretty fancy. It's got two handles here where there's different tips. So I have a round tip just a ballpoint pen tip here. And then this one is sort of like a slicer. It's a, for a straight line. And this is on, so these are hot. And uh, this has dual, dual things, in it, and it also has a temperature control. But when I started wood burning, I didn't have anything like this. They just had like the $15 one from um, AC Moore or the hobby store. Um, nothing fancy, so you don't need to start with something like this. But um, I love it, and since I do it so often, I invested in a little bit uh, cooler uh, machine that gives me a bit more control. And then what I use is actually just a an old pocket from a pair of jeans, and I use this to kind of wipe off the tip of the wood burning tool because it gets all this carbon on it, and if you just sort of scratch on the jeans, that material um, helps to clean the tip a little bit. So if you're ever having trouble when you're burning and you're not actually able to s see the burn happening, uh, you might need to just clean your tip. Okay, so now we're just going to start burning this and literally uh, you just kind of go in here and you start, you find a place to start and turn this as needed if it's not a comfortable position for you. And you're just going to start really lightly and go along all the edges here. But you can see that it's dark, but it's a little hard to tell because of the graphite on there. And at the end, after I get through this, what I usually do is just erase uh, the, I get like a rubber eraser and, and that'll erase all the graphite for you so that won't be permanently on there, but at least it gives you a guideline to use. And I would recommend practicing a little bit first on some scrap if this is one of your first times wood burning because it it is sort of an art and as you do it you'll get better at the amount of pressure that you need and the type of tip that you're comfortable with. Usually even the, the $15 ones from the store come with a couple different tips that you can swap in and out and I recommend trying all of them and just using what is comfortable for you. Everybody's different. Everybody has a different feel for this. 
and uh the ones from the the hobby store they can the handles can be a little bit more bulky than what you're looking at here with mine um that's kind of one of the benefits and that's why I chose this particular wood burner is because uh it feels more like an actual pen to me it's not as fat and wide so i have a lot more control so i'm literally just going through and tracing again it's a whole lot of tracing going on today and as you trace you'll sort of get the hang of it and it actually smells really good uh, make sure that you're you have a fan going or some sort of ventilation in your room so that you're not inhaling all these fumes um, I have a fan that blows blows this away from me, but it still smells really good because the wood is actually literally burning right now. So I'm sort of randomly going where where it's comfortable for me, but sometimes you'll feel as you're pulling the tip, it sort of stops, and try to try not to let it stop or stick on you. Just try to get it as absolutely fluid as possible because as you stop it's going to burn like sort of a a mark in there like a almost like if you pushed a pencil point really hard it's going to leave like a burn mark there so you want to try to keep your lines as even as possible as you go take a lot of breaks if your hand is cramping up or you're getting tired you can always turn it off and come back later and, you know, this might not even be the best project if this is new to you. You might want to try something that's actually not words, maybe just a, a picture of some kind, so that in case you do mess up, it's not as obvious. Once you get the hang of it, you're really going to love it. So this is the ballpoint uh, pen tool. It's a very small ballpoint and um, probably not the best option for what I'm doing actually. Um, I'd probably have a lot better luck with the slicing tool. I'm going to do that in a minute. Okay, I'm going to set this one down and switch my machine over. It takes a second or two for it to heat up here. You can see how different this one is. It's, it's really paper thin and uh, it just like cuts through it like butter. It's awesome. I love this tool. You see that? You see it smoking? So, yeah, I'm just gouging. And look how easy that is with this tool where I'm struggling to get the letters. So if you have a lot of letters that are straight, do them with the with this tool. And then anywhere you have curves, like at the bottom of the J or the ornament, you can switch over to one of your other tools. And you'll probably have a easier time than I just did. <laughs> so now I have the whole thing burned pretty much but it's kind of hard to tell if I got it all or not. So um, I actually have to grab an eraser and I'm just gonna rub pretty hard across this. Um, I have this gum, this gummy eraser. It's like totally uh, janked up. <laughs> I don't even know the word for it. But um, yeah, if, if this one was working, it's one of those like stretchy ones. If this is working, this works better if you can get your hands on one of these. But unfortunately mine is all I don't know, crumbling. It's probably just drying up and getting old. So I'll have to grab a new one. But this will work too. Um, it's just a plain white eraser. And you're just going to rub and get as much as that pencil graphite as you can. So now what I'm going to do is just sort of go back over my lines uh, to make sure that they all kind of are straightened out. So you could kind of adjust here now that I'm using the right tool really easily I can do the straight lines here. Just sort of clean up everything. And uh, yeah, these are really fun. I, I do these ornaments a lot. I've sold them on Etsy even. If you get good with that smaller pen tool, you can actually write a name on here with that or Merry Christmas or Love. And you can also do this as uh, like name tags for your gifts. Put people's names on them, which is a really cool t idea too. And what I do sometimes even is add some color to this. Uh, I can You can go in with some acrylic paint or even regular colored pencils. Um, rustic images work really well. Um, I do a lot of trees and birch trees are really fun to make. And Okay, so this looks pretty good. I mean, I'm pretty happy with this. And the next thing that you can do is um, if you have a shading tool, let me pull out my shading tool just to show you what they what that looks like. This is a shader tool here. 
Um, it sort of has this like, it's almost like the bottom of a spoon. So let me plug this one in and I'll show you kind of what that's like. And usually it, it, this can be a bit difficult with the like the $15, $20 machines just because uh, you don't have any control over the temperature. If you have a tool like this in the, the temperature control, you can make this really light and then fade the, uh, fade the burn. Uh, we're not going to do that today, though. I'm just going to keep it on pretty high like I had it, just so you could see kind of what it would look like if you use the shader tool to fill in the letters and make it nice and nice and thick like the original one was that we traced. These little slices of birch are really good. Um, there's other wood that you can buy. Birch is the best, I'd say, for for this application. I've tried, like, pine. And, and pine wood has a lot of grooves, and it's also got some sap in it. So as you're burning, it's sort of dripping sap out of it, and it's a little bumpy. Um, there's all different kinds of wood that um, that you can try, but honestly, the, I've tried a lot of different kinds, and I, I always go back to a birch or a, even a poplar wood that's nice and smooth. If you have to, you can even sand these before you start. And especially the... Um, the entry point to this uh, for 15 bucks and a couple slices of wood that you can even chop yourself. You can't really beat the entry price for this. Uh, originally, I bought the first wood burner that we've had. I bought for my boyfriend for Christmas, and we like wood burned for the entire week <laughs> between Christmas and New Year's. We made all sorts of stuff, and we got really into it, and it was just so much fun that um, we didn't upgrade though. We started selling things on on Etsy and as we made money we put it aside and after about a year we we saved up enough to buy this razor tip fancy burner. It wasn't like that expensive. I mean I'm talking about it like it was a fortune, but I'm trying to remember, but I feel like it was a little over a hundred dollars. Maybe it was two hundred, but it wasn't like outrageous for for this type of tool. I just think that until you decide whether you really like to wood burn or not, you should stick with lower entry level product. If you're enjoying it, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think of of my little wood burning project. And if you try it, I'd love to hear from you too. Just about done here. And the next thing that you would have to do is actually um, take this and add your color if you'd like. If you want to do a color pencil, crayon, uh, paint, marker, or anything, um, do that and then you're going to seal it. So I just use a spray polyurethane like from the spray can. And then let it dry. I spray the sides too and I spray the back so that it's completely good. And then we usually drill a tiny little pilot hole or poke poke a little hole here. And then we use an eye hook to screw this in. And then I'll just tie a piece of twine and that's pretty much it. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'm going to put a link to a playlist up here because I'm doing all sorts of different wood slice ornaments, all different ways in the playlist. So you can see lots of different options. So I'll see you in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching.